Hello again. We've been talking about the common criteria. Remember, that's a criteria, a set of criteria for uh, evaluating security products and also these protection profile things. Well, uh, we said last time that we could evaluate a protection profile, but we can also evaluate particular products, and these are called security targets. Let's look at an example of that. Okay, so the example we're going to consider is uh, something built by uh, Sun, it's called the Java System Identity Manager, and this was evaluated to EAL2. Remember, there are seven of these EAL levels uh, in the summer of 2005. So this is a real system that Sun created and wanted to have evaluated for certain security properties. So the idea here was that they were supposed to put forward evidence that they thought carefully about what the security requirements of such a system would be and how their system was going to counter them. So for example, a couple of assumptions that were made is that there were no untrusted users on the system, that the system had reliable timestamps. And this first one, that there are no untrusted users on the system, tells you something about the operating environment in which this uh, system is assumed to be deployed. So it's a pretty, uh, a pretty benign environment. You're not assuming that you know, somebody can an arbitrary malicious person can log into the system. Uh, the set of threats that were being countered, for example, uh, a user might have specified a guessable password, that's a problem on a lot of systems, uh, that authorized users might perform some bad actions, that it might be mismanaged, and so on. So the idea is that uh, Sun enumerated the set of threats that they thought that this system might have to counter, and now they'd have to go and say how those threats were actually countered. Okay, so there were security objectives, just as we saw for the protection profile. Uh, manage data, uh, store properties of users. I mean, that's what this system is really trying to do. This is an identity manager system. Uh, password generation supports the automatic generation of passwords and password quality says that passwords have to be of a certain length and have to be unpronounceable or whatever. Um, and then there were some security objectives for the environment. You had to have a good timestamp mechanism and there had to be mechanisms in place to guarantee that no one logged into the system that wasn't allowed to. And then there were a set of security requirements, which we are not enumerated here, but there were about 21 of them. Uh, and once again, those were uh, annotated with sections from the uh, Common Criteria Manual to say that these are the kinds of requirements that you, that you have to have for this system. Uh, and then the whole thing is wrapped up with, uh, with a rationale and a summary of how their system actually uh, counters the threats and guarantees that the assumptions are in fact satisfied. So for example, uh, remember that one of the threats was that there are bad passwords and someone, a, a malicious person could log onto the system because somebody had a bad password. Well, we have specified that passwords are generated automatically by the system and we've also set certain parameters that said the passwords have to be of a certain length and maybe contain you know, various weird characters and maybe have to be unpronounceable or something like that. And so that particular threat is countered by those particular mechanisms within the security policy of the system. And so the idea at the end of the day is you've got a set of assumptions and, and uh, threats and they're countered by various mechanisms. And then Sun has to make an argument that their implementation actually satisfies this and, and, and uh, implements the policy as specified. Okay. So this was a simple example, but it shows uh, pretty well how one of these uh, security targets goes. Uh, so a security target, recall, is a specific uh, system or class of systems, uh, and these are submitted for evaluation by some, by some evaluation authority. The policy might be specified uh, for this system, that is, Sun might have given a, given a specific policy for the system, or they might have said, we want to have it evaluated against a specific protection profile, which was previously evaluated and may be on the shelf. And then the idea of this, of this process is to specify what security means for a system, and then convince the evaluation 
or the certification authority that they've done a lot of work to show that their system actually satisfies this. And then the certification authority gives them a rating uh, that says, yes, they convinced us that they did, uh, they did the work necessary to show that the, the security that they described is actually implemented by the system. However, if you remember, they were only going for EAL2, which is a pretty low level of certification. And so uh, the evidence that they had to uh, show wasn't very strong. If they were going for a much higher level of certification, like EAL7, then they would have to have given a much stronger proof uh, of the correspondence between their artifact and their security policy. For example, do a formal proof. Thanks.